In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the temperature screening terminal, specifically its default out-of-box configuration, and how it operates in standalone mode. We're going to cover the standalone operation with this default configuration. We'll talk about the simple changes that we can make to alter how it operates, how we can monitor the device, some common applications, and of course, how to perform a temperature calibration to make sure that we are getting a proper screening. So what is the default configuration? Well, basically it's temperature measurement only. That's all it's doing, even though we know that this is an access control terminal and a highly accurate thermographic camera working together, the out-of-box default configuration is really temperature measurement only. No credential other than your temperature is needed to pass gain access or to alert someone that you're okay to continue on, say, in through a building. It does not have to control a door However, it can. Mask detection is enabled. However, by default, a mask will not be required and there will be no reminder displayed or heard if an individual is not wearing a mask. Now the question of course is, can we change these options? And the answer is, sure we can. We're going to make those changes to fit our application. So let's see how it works right out of the box and then we'll see some of the changes that we can make and how they can be made. Let's take a look at this mock application that I have set up here in my office. The direction of movement will be up the screen making a right hand turn towards the door, at which point I'll encounter the temperature screening terminal, which will be facing towards me at approximately a 45 degree angle. If you remember from our physical installation video, behind that I have a board representing typical door hardware, including a door strike, door contacts, an alarm strobe, and a request to exit button on the opposite side of the door. We'll be using some of that hardware to simulate different things that happen in the standalone application. Now let's take a look at the overview of the scene as someone approaches the temperature screening terminal that's operating at default configuration. Now let's take a look at this again, except this time we're going to focus on the screen of the temperature screening terminal. Let's see what the person sees. Please enter. So if we go back and we freeze that frame, we see the on-screen indication shows the measured skin surface temperature and a welcome, please enter message. But currently there is no indication of a mask requirement or a mask reminder. Now let's take a look at an over temperature situation. Please speak to reception. Now as I freeze this frame on the screen for you, first we can see that we're getting a red banner at the bottom of the temperature screening terminal. Our temperature is above our maximum threshold. And there is an audible message telling us to see reception along with a text message on the screen. Also, if you look at the door panel behind the terminal, you see that the alarm indicator is on, but the door actually energized the strike so that we could go in. And that's because we haven't changed any of the defaults. And by default, we're allowed in the building with a high temperature and without a mask. So these are things we're going to learn how to change going forward. So now it's time to look at some of the changes we can make and we're going to do that by entering the menus with a long press of about three seconds. Then we're going to need to enter the password that we set up during device activation. Don't forget while entering the password for capital letters you'll use the up arrow but when you're done with the capital letter you must hit that up arrow a second time to return to non-capitalized letters. Now we're going to take a little tour and we're going to start off in the temperature section. And in the temperature section there's a lot of different settings here that you could affect. Enable temperature detection is on by default. There's an over temperature threshold and an under temperature threshold or a minimum temperature. If someone was to try to sneak in with a fever by putting ice on their head or something like that 
you might be able to detect that. There's temperature compensation. There's a do not open the door when temperature is abnormal. And temperature measurement only. This is the mode we're in right now. We're not actually doing access control. Display the temperature value and we can switch that between centigrade and Fahrenheit. Then there's two areas that you shouldn't be messing with unless you're having a big problem, which is the area calibration and area settings. And finally, if you're using a black body, we do support the black body with the temperature screening terminal. However, you'll need to go through that setup process. Also, don't forget to save your work by hitting the check mark in the upper right hand corner. Now we'll go into the system menu. We'll make sure that voice prompt is on and we can change the voice volume. Any number from 0 to 10. Our application mode should be indoor. And then we have the community number, building number, and unit number. They're all set to unit number one. If you have multiple units, you want to set each unit differently and save your work by hitting the check mark in the upper right hand corner. Back into the system menu, now we go into the face picture section. And here's where we're going to set up those different mask parameters. So first of all, face with mask detection is turned on. But notice that must wear face mask and reminder of wearing face mask were both turned off. We're going to go ahead and just turn on reminder of wearing face mask. While we're here, we can take a look at a couple other settings such as WDR level, the wide dynamic range level of the visible camera can be adjusted and also the pupillary distance. This is the minimum pupil distance that the camera has to see in order to detect a face. When you're done, save your work and hit the back arrow and we're ready to move on and see what effect the changes that we just made are going to have on the system. So let's remember, our mask reminder is on, but must wear mask is turned off. So let's see what the person stepping up to the temperature screening terminal sees. Please enter. Please enter. Please enter. Even without a mask, I get a voice prompt that I'm allowed to enter. But on screen, there is a text message that reminds me to please wear a mask. Please enter. Please enter. Please enter. And with a mask on, I get the voice prompt that tells me I can enter, but there is no text message on the screen telling me to wear a mask. Now let's enable must wear a mask. We're going to go into the menus, put in our password, and we're going to go to the system menu, face picture, and we'll enable must wear face mask. Save our work, back out of the menu, and now with must wear face mask enabled, let's see the differences. So with a face mask on, I get welcome, please enter, just like before. Please wear a face mask. Please wear a face mask. Please wear a face mask. But with no face mask on, I get an amber screen with the text message of please wear a face mask and a voice prompt to wear a face mask as well. So what if we're using the temperature screening terminal to control a door lock or door hardware? In this scenario, we have a door mock-up using typical door hardware. You might have also noticed when I was going through the configuration menus, I actually turned on a feature that said to not open the door if the temperature measured was abnormal. But let's see how it works with just masks. Enter. In our first scenario, the individual is wearing a mask. The temperature is normal. So we're going to get a welcome, please enter. And you'll notice that the red LED on the relay on the door mock-up illuminated, indicating that the door strike was energized so that the door could be opened. 
Also notice that the strobe did not turn on, indicating any type of an alarm condition. Please wear a face mask. Please wear a face mask. In our second scenario, the individual is not wearing a mask. We get an amber alert. However, the temperature range is normal. But because we have must wear mask enabled, the door does not open and an alarm is generated for not wearing a mask. Now let's see what happens to an individual that is wearing a mask but is over temperature. Remember, we turned on the setting that said for over temperature, do not open the door. Please speak to reception. So in this case, we're going to get a red banner at the bottom of the screen. It's displaying our abnormal temperature along with both an audible and text message that says, please speak to reception. We notice that the alarm strobe is enabled and the door lock is not energized. And that's because we have it set to not open the door for an abnormal temperature. So how are we going to monitor the different events that take place with our temperature screening terminal? Well, it's really gonna depend on your application. Perhaps the person that's doing the monitoring, say a security guard or a receptionist, is in close proximity to the temperature screening terminal and can simply hear the audio prompts that come from it. Another option would be to use the alarm output from the terminal. Now it would need to be connected to some device, as in my case where I had it connected to a flashing light. A third option is the DS-KC001 video intercom monitoring tablet. This tablet is designed to work directly with the temperature screening terminal. We'll cover it in depth in another training video. And finally, software such as our IVMS 4200 or Hike Central can be used to provide a much higher level of monitoring, allowing for manual door control, different types of alarms, review of events, emails, and much more. When it comes to applications, there are many different scenarios where this product is a very good fit. One of the most common applications today is pre-screening at the entrance to a public building. In other words, we have the public entering, so obviously they have no credential. So we're not using it necessarily as a quote unquote access control system. We're using it for temperature pre-screening, maybe for mass detection, but ultimately a person, security guard, receptionist, or someone is going to be telling that person to go ahead and pass on to the next portion of the facility. Although we could control a door as well. But that is our second application. Pre-screening and control of a single door when there's no other access control system in place. The temperature screening terminal is a standalone access control system. So in this case, we could eliminate, if necessary, that security guard or that receptionist by actually controlling a door and using the temperature screening terminal for temperature measurement, for mass detection or not mass detection, and ultimately opening the door to allow someone in. A third option would be an addition to an existing system, allowing for the addition of temperature screening and mass detection capabilities. Beyond that, there are many different scenarios that you're going to run into where the temperature screening terminal will be a good fit. Now it's possible that the measured skin surface temperature and the person's actual temperature are not going to be exactly the same because let's face it, we're not actually taking someone's temperature. There are also environmental conditions that have to be taken into account even in an indoor situation. So how can I calibrate the measured skin surface temperature to match a person's body temperature? Well, there is a simple way to do this calibration. First of all, your system should be up and running for a minimum of 90 minutes. Once that has happened and the temperature screening terminal has reached its stabilized internal temperature, then we're gonna use a minimum of 10 humans. 10 humans who have been resting quietly for 30 minutes. They're going to be measured with a thermometer and then immediately measured by the temperature screening terminal. 
We're going to log both readings for each person, the thermometer reading and the terminal reading. We're going to discard the two highest and two lowest thermometer measurements. That's going to leave us with six. Then we're going to average out the remaining six temperatures from both the thermometer and the terminal, and then we're going to apply a calibration to bring both to the same number. It'll look something like this. I have 10 persons, I have their thermometer temps, and I have their temperature screening terminal temps. I'm going to take out the two highest thermometer temps and the associated temperature screening temps. Those are in red. And I'm going to take out the two lowest thermometer temps and the associated temperature screening temps. Those are in blue. And then I take the remaining six that are in black for the thermometer and I average those out and I come up with 98.5. For the temperature screening terminal temps, I'm going to average out the six remaining and I get 97.9666. So in my head, I'm going to round it up to 98.0. So the difference between the thermometer temp average of 98.5 and the temperature screening terminal temp of 98.0 is 0.5. So I'm going to add in a calibration of plus 0.5 degrees to the temperature screening terminal. So even though I didn't have 10 people, I've done my 10 measurements with my thermometer, 10 measurements from the terminal, determined what my average is, applied my offset, and now I'm going to show it to you live. As you can see, I'm well within the accuracy specification, so I can feel confident that I'm getting a good skin surface temperature measurement. I hope you found this information useful, and if so, you can hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, and if you turn on the alarm feature, you'll be notified when we post new videos.